It used to be weeks back in the good old days when I would have to find something to write about here in this quiet little town. I'm Michael DeWitt, Jr., managing editor at the Hampton County Guardian. And then these uh, Murdoch incidents began, and things haven't been quiet since then. Attorney Alec Murdoch said he was shot in the head while changing a tire on this road in Hampton County, South Carolina. Then police arrested 61-year-old Curtis Smith. Police say Murdoch hired Smith to kill him. He wanted you to kill him? Yeah, he wanted me to kill him. To make it look like a suicide? Yeah. Ain't happening. Why did you agree to sit down with us? Um, I think people should hear my side of it. You'll hear a lot more from Curtis Smith, the man accused of shooting high-profile attorney Alex Murdoch right here on this rural road in Hampton County, South Carolina. Just one incident in a bizarre and tragic series of deadly events touching the Murdoch family. The shooting of Alex Murdoch comes nearly three months after his son and his wife were both found shot in Colleton County. First, there's the double murder of his wife and son, Maggie and Paul Murdoch. This is Alex Murdoch, my wife and child. Alex told investigators he came home and found them. What is your name? They were both shot multiple times. <laughs> my name is Alex Murdoch. Do we really know who Alex Murdoch is? I think we thought we did. Up until the double homicides, we thought that Alex Murdoch was a, this prominent, wealthy, entitled attorney. When you are from a family that has been prominent for generations, it comes with access and connections. When Maggie and Paul Murdoch were found dead, who were the most likely suspects? Two common theories that were going around was one, Alex Murdoch has something to do with it. Did he murder his wife and son? No. Does he have any idea who did? No. The other theory was that this was somehow related to the boat crash. A crash that killed teenager Mallory Beach with Murdoch's son Paul allegedly drunk and at the wheel. 911, where's your emergency? We're in a boat crash on Arthur Street. There's six of us and one is missing. Okay, who's missing? Female Mallory Beach is missing. Who's driving the boat? You all know Alec Murdoch. That's his son. Good luck. That's when he indicated that he couldn't be touched. Never set foot in a jail. Do you feel that Mallory has gotten justice? I don't, that's just hard to answer. All I ever wanted was for him to get on the stand and say I'm sorry. Then there's another incident with a connection to the Murdochs. The mysterious death of 19-year-old Stephen Smith. His body was found in a roadway with a wound to the head. The rumors were that there were several young men in a truck. The only name that was given to me was the murder name, and of course, everybody's kind of shy to say that out, you know what I mean? I don't think anybody will be charged with Stephen Smith's homicide. Multiple deaths with the connection to one family. Alec Murdoch shot this past weekend himself. Of all the theories swirling around Maggie and Paul's murders, What's the lead theory today? Now I'm hearing the more popular theories that he was somehow involved in this. This is like a whodunit playing out in real time on the internet in the age of social media. Like a John Grisham novel come to life. We're now in the third act and things have gotten weird. How will it end? With this story, anything can happen. was shot in the head over the weekend. Disgraced lawyer Alex Murdoch surrendered to authority today. 
One story practically dominated the news cycle in South Carolina's low country since 2021. It's a series of cases that the locals have dubbed the Murdoch Mysteries. All somehow with a connection to a prominent and powerful local attorney, Alex Murdoch. Standing now on a one your emergency. This is Alex Murdoch, my wife and child, Scott Badley. But how did it come to this? Michael DeWitt, editor of the Hampton County Guardian, part of the Gannett USA Today Network, says Alex Murdoch came from a family that over generations grew deep roots and amassed power and influence in this part of South Carolina. The Murdochs built an empire of sorts here in the Low Country. It began over a century ago when the family established a law firm. Three generations of Murdoch men also held the public office of solicitor, the chief prosecutor. Alex didn't continue that tradition. Alex inherited the last name and the red hair and very little of the talent. Alex worked as a volunteer prosecutor in the office, but primarily he made a good living in the family law firm. He married his college sweetheart, Maggie, and they had two sons, Buster and Paul. They lived the good life, spending time at their 1700 acre estate and two private islands. They have now generations of political power and political support and contacts and access. And with access comes power. Seth Stoughton is a law professor at the University of South Carolina. A powerful legal family in small town South Carolina has a lot of levers they can pull. But in September 2021, it looked like someone was out to challenge that power with what appeared to be an attempt on Alex Murdoch's life. According to his lawyer, Alex Murdoch told investigators he was changing a flat tire right here on this rural road when a person in a pickup truck passed by, asked Alex if he was having car trouble, and then shot him in the head. When I turned my back, they tried to shoot me. They shot me. But incredibly, just 12 days later, on September 16th, Alex Murdoch appeared in court for allegedly trying to plan his own death by conspiring with this man, Curtis Smith, to shoot him. Did you shoot Alex Murdoch? No. When did you first meet Alex Murdoch? About 35 years ago. Smith, a handyman, says he is a distant cousin of Murdoch but only got to know Alex well a few years ago and says he started doing odd jobs for the family. We talked on the phone most days, just chatting back and forth about different things. Uh, You've described Alex as like a brother to yeah, you. Yeah, he's like a brother to me. We said I thought he was. Smith was released on bond and now faces six felony charges in the shooting of Alex Murdoch. Murdoch will face three charges in the shooting. But with several ongoing investigations and lawsuits looming, many wonder when and how this steep fall from grace will end. Alex Murdoch's world unraveled, and it unraveled quickly. It all started, says DeWitt, back in February 2019. 911, where's your emergency? Things began unraveling for the Murdoch family with the boat crash. We're in a boat crash on Arthur Creek. It was about 2.20 a.m. Six young friends who had been partying crashed a boat into a bridge. One of them was 19-year-old Paul Murdoch. There's six of us and one is missing. Another was 19-year-old Mallory Beach, who disappeared that morning. Hey, who is missing? Female Mallory Beach is missing. She's in the water. She was just this wonderful, fun-loving, happy girl. And everybody loved her. Lynn Revis and her niece Mallory were extremely close. You always got a hug hello and a hug goodbye. And the last thing she told me was she loved me. As investigators later learned, the fatal night began around eight hours earlier at the Murdoch family's river home on a private island. Then 19-year-old Paul Murdoch gathered five friends for a night of partying. 
Among them were Connor Cook, Connor's cousin, Anthony Cook, and Anthony's girlfriend, Mallory Beach. All were underage, say investigators, and all were drinking alcohol. Just before they gathered, Paul Murdoch used the ID of his brother Buster to buy beer at this convenience store. And if you look at the video footage, when Paul comes out of the store, he's holding the beer up, he's celebrating. Shortly after gathering at the river home, they boarded the Murdoch family's boat and took off. Investigators with South Carolina's Department of Natural Resources would later use data from the boat's Garmin navigation system to create a timeline of events that led to the fatal crash. Around 8 p.m., the group arrived at a party at a house on the river. Just after midnight, the six of them boarded the boat and headed toward downtown Beaufort. Paul and Connor decided to go into this bar for a drink. He just was very persistent about going up to Luther's and getting a shot. Passenger Miley Altman later told police in this interview that the rest of them didn't want Paul to go in. Just kind of, he just is a whole other person when he's drunk. They went in, pounded a couple of shots, somewhere around 1, 1 1.30. See the video footage of them leaving the boat dock. It appeared as if a couple of them were very intoxicated. It was kind of a sad, touching moment when you see Mallory and her boyfriend. I think it's the last moment that anybody captured an image of her alive. It was around 1.15 a.m. when they took off again on the boat. Paul was just driving, doing donuts. Miley Altman told investigators tempers were running short. And so Connor starts driving for a little bit, and then Paul, like, he, like, stops Connor, and he's like, no, this is my boat, like, let me drive. I saw the bridge coming. What bridge is it? Paul, what bridge is this? First responders dash cam video captured the mayhem. All right, where's everybody else at? At the bridge, at the bottom of the bridge. All right. Everybody was accounted for except. All right, we're still missing one. What's her name? Everybody was crying, scared, shocked, just worried about their friend. Then Beaufort County Deputy Sheriff Stephen Domino was one of the first on the scene. Paul Murdoch wasn't saying much, but Mallory's <laughs> very distraught boyfriend, Anthony Cook, was talking to Deputy Domino. After Domino got Anthony into his patrol car, Paul Murdoch came into sight. He was walking up from where the boat was. Get that mother right there away from me. He actually tried to rush through me to get to Paul um, because I guess he saw him smiling or- Paul's smiling while Anthony's girlfriend's missing in the water. Correct. Bro, you smiling like you're funny. That's when Anthony Cook definitively identified the person he said was driving the boat. You all know Alec Murdoch? Oh, yeah, I know the name. That's his son. That's so driving the boat. Good luck. That's when he indicated that he couldn't be touched. You're talking about Alex Murdoch's son. Good luck. Tell me about February 24th, 2019. I had got a phone call at about five o'clock that morning and my sister was calling to tell me that Mallory was lost, that she had been in a boat crash and they couldn't find her. Lynn Revis says her niece Mallory had already been missing for nearly three hours when her family finally learned the news, but not from police. One of my cousins had called our mom and wanted to know if she knew about the boat crash, that Mallory had been in it. Everybody's on their way. They all went to where it had happened, and I just couldn't go. The search went on for days. There was people from other states that came, and they wanted help. 
On the eighth day, two volunteers, brothers, found Mallory's body about five miles down the river from the crash site. I was at home, and someone called and said they had found her. And I fell apart. Many in Hampton County were grieving, says Michael DeWitt. Hundreds of people attended her funeral. There were so many people. It took like four hours to greet everybody. I've never seen so many people. Lynn says even the Murdochs were there. Paul was at Mallory's funeral, and they even went to the, to the cemetery when we buried her. And in the weeks after that, we're just waiting. Is someone going to make an arrest? Is there going to be a, a admission of, of, of guilt or responsibility? We're in a boat crash. A month after the crash, afraid they might never learn what happened to Mallory, the Beach family filed a wrongful death suit against members of the Murdoch family. Now the Beach family could depose the survivors about what led to the fatal boat crash. Paul was allegedly acting rash and reckless. Well, those children say that they begged for him to stop, and they begged, just let us out, and he refused. And Mallory said she was scared. Yes, and that hurts my heart that she was so terrified. In her deposition, Paul's then girlfriend, Morgan Doty, said, Paul and I got into an argument because I didn't take his side. He slapped her and spit on her, she said, and kept leaving the boat's wheel to fight with her. Whenever it was done, she said, he would go back and take over again. Authorities believe all that movement explains the last moments recorded by the boat's Garmin device. At 2.20 a.m., the Garmin recorded the boat slowing down and then speeding up. Seconds later, the Garmin shows the boat coming to an abrupt stop when it struck a piling over here at Archer's Creek Bridge. In his deposition, Connor Cook said that the morning of the crash, he held back from telling investigators that Paul was driving the boat because he was afraid. And while at the hospital being treated for a broken jaw, he says he was told by Alex Murdoch that he didn't need to tell anyone who was driving. Alex reportedly went from room to room to try to communicate with the other boat crash passengers and get them all on the same page. A hospital security guard said he overheard Alex Murdoch on his cell phone say, she's gone, don't worry. That hurt when I read that because we were asleep, did not know anything was going on. Instead of worrying about who's driving the boat, let us know. I think that from day one, ground zero, the effort was, what can we do to get Paul out of this? In fact, in a recent lawsuit, Connor Cook claims Alex Murdoch tried to frame him as the driver of the boat, not Paul. How can we create a cloud of confusion and say, can you prove who was driving the boat? At the hospital, Paul Murdoch's blood alcohol level was tested by doctors treating him. Several hours after the crash, the 19-year-old was three times over the legal limit and was allegedly still acting out. He was getting belligerent with the, the nurses, staff, according to court records, just being loud and troublesome. But that morning and for weeks to come, many felt that Paul Murdoch was not treated like a suspect in a crime. We didn't think he was going to be charged. Why? Because it was taking so long. We just didn't think we'd see that day. And then for it to happen on our birthday. Nearly two months after the boat crash, on what would have been Mallory's 20th birthday, Paul was charged with three felony counts, including boating under the influence of alcohol or drugs and causing the death of Mallory Beach. He pleaded not guilty. An officer of the court came forward with handcuffs to formally arrest him, fingerprint him, and 
they were waved away. Like, we don't need that, we, you know. So he was never handcuffed. In his booking photograph, Murdoch is wearing his street clothes. Were you surprised that Paul Murdoch never spent a day in jail? I don't know how it happened. Um, my personal opinion, yes. Bond was set at $50,000. And we see from news reports after this that Paul continued to live his lifestyle. How you doing, sir? Yes. About a year later, Paul got a speeding ticket while towing a boat. The reason I pulled you over, you were booking it. Yes. Okay, I got you at 78. 78? Yes. Two years after charges were filed, there was still no trial date set. When on June 7, 2021, Alex Murdoch called police and said he'd found his wife and son Paul shot dead. Maggie and Paul. Maggie is her name? Yes, ma'am. And please hurry. <laughs> June 7, 2021, as Paul Murdoch was awaiting trial in the death of Mallory Beach, a fusillade of gunfire erupted on the Murdoch family estate. This is Alex Murdoch at 4147 Moselle Road. At 10.07 p.m., a panic-sounding Alex Murdoch called 911, saying he had just arrived home to find his wife of nearly 28 years, Maggie, and their son shot. Is he moving at all, your son? I know you said that she was shot, but what about your son? <laughs> Nobody, they're not, neither one of them's moving. First responders rushed to the Murdoch family hunting lodge, a sprawling 1,770 acre property in Colleton County. But it was too late. 52-year-old Maggie and her 22-year-old son, Paul, were dead. This place of refuge, where the family had spent their free time hunting and enjoying the outdoors, where Paul had honed his shooting skills alongside his father and brother, was now a gruesome crime scene. Describe the reaction of the community after the double homicide. Shock. A lot of people know them. So there was grief and, and dismay from a lot of people. Mallory Beach's aunt, Lynn Revis, was one of those people. The thought of the horror that they went through, I cried. Who would want to kill a mother and son? That's what I can't stop thinking. We've thought about it too. Things like that shouldn't be happening in our little community. But what happened in this little community soon became national. Investigation into this double homicide continues. And international news. A series of family tragedies began in June. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, known as SLED, the state's top investigative agency, took over the case. The Colleton County Coroner estimates that they were killed between 9 and 9.30 p.m. They were found fairly close to one another on the ground near the dog kennels. Maggie, a dog lover, was said to have spent a lot of time at the kennels with the hunting dogs. Sources tell media that Maggie was killed with uh, some type of automatic rifle, like an AR-15 of some sort, and Paul was killed with a shotgun, and they were both shot multiple times. At the time, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division hadn't named any suspects, but that didn't stop social media sleuths from espousing theories. One, Alex Murder had something to do with it. The other theory was that this was somehow related to the boat crash. Somebody wanted justice that they didn't think they would get in the courts in relation to the boat crash. Alex claims to have an airtight alibi he was at the hospital visiting his sick father when the shootings took place. But alibis can be deceiving, says Professor Stoughton. Sometimes the person behind the murder is not the same person as the one who pulls the trigger. You think there could be a hitman, possibly? We've certainly seen other cases where there are 
hired killers, hired guns. I wouldn't want to suggest that, that is the case here, but sometimes people are smart about how they do bad things. Some are asking if Alex hired the man, now accused of shooting him. Did Alex ever try to hire you as a hitman? No. Did you kill Maggie or Paul Murdoch? No. At a recent hearing, I questioned the Murdoch family attorney, Dick Harpootlian, about the double murder. Did he murder his wife and son? No. Does he have any idea who did? No. Recent reports about the Murdoch marriage have raised questions about a possible motive. People magazine, which cited unnamed law enforcement sources, claimed that Maggie and Alex did not have a good relationship and they were going to get a divorce. That she was consulting with an out-of-town attorney. Were there any problems in Maggie and Alex's marriage? Absolutely none. None. And I, I'm, trust me, I was with them for almost two years. Always affectionate, always courteous, and just a picture of a domestic bliss. And what about the oldest motive in the book, money? Did Maggie and Paul Murdoch have life mud. insurance policies? They didn't have any insurance. They did not have they life had insurance. No insurance? They had no insurance. Okay. Getting to the truth in this case will be a challenge, says Professor Stoughton. Investigators are going to have a hell of a time sorting through all of the possible explanations and motives given the different contacts and connections here. I do not envy them that job. As investigators were attempting to untangle the snarls of evidence in the double murders, they came across yet another case with a connection to the Murdochs, the mysterious death of Stephen Smith. Just 15 days after the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch, SLED made a stunning announcement. They had found information while investigating the double murders that led them to open a new investigation into an old case, the mysterious death of 19-year-old Stephen Smith. Tell me, who is Stephen Smith? Stephen Smith was a young man living in Hampton County. He had a sister, they, they were twins. Openly gay and well-liked, Stephen attended the same high school as Buster Murdoch. They were in the same class, but apparently traveled in different circles, neither friends nor enemies. After graduation, Buster went to college to study government and international affairs. Stephen went to a community college to pursue his dream of becoming a nurse. But all those dreams came to a sudden halt here on this two-lane country road sometime in the early morning hours of July 8, 2015. What happened to Stephen has been the subject of rumors and speculation ever since. Can't the county now. Where's your emergency? Uh, passerby calls 911. I see somebody laying out. And is it in the road or on the side of the road? It's in the road. Somebody boy hit him and Stephen Smith was found dead at the scene from blunt force trauma to the head. Stephen's yellow Chevy was found roughly three miles away, his wallet inside, the gas cap unscrewed. Initial reports by the highway patrol claim Stephen ran into car trouble and was likely walking when he was struck and killed by a vehicle. But recently released audio interviews show some officers on the case did not agree with that hit and run theory. Nothing at the scene appeared that it was a vehicular accident. This is the voice of Trooper David Rao. Walked both shoulders of the highway, east and west, looking for any evidence, didn't see anything that appeared to be vehicular involved. There was no vehicle debris, no broken headlight or or paint scrapes or, or anything. When someone is hit by a car, they are very frequently knocked out of their shoes. Stephen Smith's shoes were still on when he was found. They were still on and they were loose. It certainly raises questions as to whether hit and run is the right 
conclusion. Stephen's mother, Sandy Smith, told the local CBS affiliate she didn't believe the hit and run scenario either. The only damage to his body was his head. From his right eye socket to the back of his head, his right shoulder was dislocated. When someone is struck by a car going at speed, and I don't mean 70 miles an hour, I mean even something like 25, 30, 35 miles an hour, you fly. Bodies get pushed a long way. The body rolls and moves, and there's, there's road burn, there's rash marks. There's evidence often on the road. Sandy Smith told Michael DeWitt's newspaper she believed her son was murdered. She believed it was a hate crime related in some way to his sexuality. And in our interviews with her, she pleaded to the public, if anybody knows anything, please, I want answers. Investigators like Trooper Todd Proctor spent months talking to Stephen's friends, family, and possible love interests, trying to get those answers. You're the ninth person that I've talked to so far about this, so ho hopefully some people are going to start talking. In recorded audio interviews, one name kept coming up over and over again. Stephen's sister, Stephanie, heard that name multiple times. I went into the store and a bunch of people kept coming up to me and they're like, did you know the Murdoch boys are behind it? Neither brother has ever been named a suspect and the Murdoch family attorney has not responded to 48 Hours' request for comment on the Smith case. But Smith family attorney Andy Savage said publicly the focus on the Murdoch family may be unfounded, quote, there are suspects we have in sight that are unconnected to Murdoch. The pathologist ruled the blunt head trauma that killed Stephen could have possibly come from contact with the side view mirror of a passing truck. Former no trooper evidence. Todd Proctor told Fox News he didn't believe it then and he doesn't believe it now. It looked like it was more staged, um, like possibly the body had been placed in the roadway. The case was never solved and went cold until the house of Murdoch came crumbling down one brick at a time. And it's almost been a case of episodic television where Tune in this week and we'll see what's next from Hampton County, home of the Murdochs. On September 6th, 2021, two days after being shot, Alex Murdoch found himself once again making front page news when he stunned the world by releasing this statement. I have made a lot of decisions that I truly regret, he said, and announced he was leaving the law firm. Alex Murdoch put out a statement saying he's going into rehab. Alex Murdoch was now saying he has been addicted to opioids for two decades a surprise to many. The idea of a 20-year-old serious opioid addiction does not seem consistent with Alex Murdoch's successful practice as an attorney. It wasn't only claims of drug abuse now staining Murdoch's reputation. Murdoch has also been accused of stealing millions from his own law firm and was asked to resign the day before he was shot. Friday, the law firm has a come to Jesus meeting with him. We know you're allegedly stealing money, you're out. Saturday, the reported shooting. Monday, Alex releases a statement saying, I'm going into rehab. Then came the news about why Murdoch had allegedly hired Curtis Smith. He says it was to make his suicide look like murder, so his son Buster could collect a $10 million insurance payout. 
I believe one of the initial statements was that because he did not know whether his life insurance would pay out in the event of a suicide. He's a lawyer who is perfectly capable of reading his insurance policy. Murdoch's confession sent Curtis Smith to jail for two days until he posted a $55,000 bond for his alleged role in the shooting and another $5,000 for possession of methamphetamine found in his home when he was arrested. They just arrested me based on what he said. According to Curtis, there was no fraud scheme. Alex called him that day to help with a flat tire. When he arrived, Curtis says he found a desperate man holding a gun. He's down there with, like this. He said, yeah, you got to take care of this. And I said, well, I can't do it. And he told me he turned his head. I just grabbed his arm, put it behind his head, took the gun from him. Curtis says the gun went off in the struggle, but he managed to take it from Alex and dispose of it. Then he got out of there as fast as he could. Why did you leave the scene? I didn't know anything else to do. He was alive. He was alive, and the gun was out of his hand. Curtis Smith's defense attorney, Johnny McCoy. Some people would think, call the police, call someone. Well, well Alex Murdaugh is the police. He's a prosecutor. <laughs> Curtis didn't report anything because there's no crime. He saved his life. On September 16th, 2021, facing charges of insurance fraud, conspiracy, and filing a false police report. Alex Murdoch turned himself in. No plea has been entered yet. The fact that uh, Murdoch sat in a chair in a jumpsuit with handcuffs is something I've never seen in my lifetime. Despite the serious charges against him, Alex Murdoch was released on $20,000 bond and allowed to go back to rehab in Florida. While there, investigators were looking into all of his business dealings when the list of missing money and suspicious deaths orbiting Alex Murdoch's world grew longer. And now included this woman, Gloria Satterfield. Gloria was the housekeeper for the Murdoch family for more than 20 years. Ronnie Richter is an attorney for the Satterfield family. She literally helped raise Alec Murdoch's sons, Paul and Buster. In 2018, the 57-year-old died after a trip and fall accident at the Murdoch estate, the very same property where Maggie and Paul would be found dead in 2021. What's been reported is that she was at the house that day on the front steps. The dogs got a little rambunctious and gave her a push and she fell down the stairs. Back then, Satterfield's death was not questioned. Instead, it was ruled natural, and no autopsy was ever performed. There is nothing natural about a 57-year-old woman falling down a flight of steps and dying from head trauma. At Gloria's funeral, Murdoch did something very odd, says Richter. He recommended Satterfield's sons file a wrongful death lawsuit against him. Alex even steered them toward an attorney, his former college roommate and Paul Murdoch's godfather, Corey Fleming. A lot of trust was placed in both Alec and in Corey to do the right things. And it really went south from the outset. Court documents show a $4.3 million payout by Alex's insurance company, but none of the money ever went to Gloria's family. Where did that money go? Well, allegedly, it went into Alex Murdoch's pocket. On September 15th, 2021, SLED announced they were opening a criminal investigation into Satterfield's death and the handling of her estate. Then, on October 14th, Another twist in the Alex Murdoch case, the new criminal charges the disgraced lawyer is facing. Alex Murdoch then faced two felony charges for his alleged role in the Satterfield insurance fraud. No plea was entered in this case either. But this time, a judge ordered Alex Murdoch to be held without bond. I have a word for the man, Barnett. He 
Anytime. He's been in Richland County Jail since October 16th, 2021. And the family of Mallory Beach hope Murdoch is investigated for obstruction of justice in the investigation into Mallory's death. This is where Mallory is buried. For the family of Mallory Beach. There's just days where you just want to cry all day long. The grieving continues. What would justice possibly look like for your family now? Now, I just think if the lawsuit would be settled so we can get on with our lives. Because Mallory died almost three years ago. And every time these stories come out, it's like it happens all over again. with the murder of his new wife's two children. Did your father, Chad Daybell, play any role in killing JJ and Tylee? No. no. His children speak out together. If he didn't kill them, then why were their bodies found buried in your father's backyard? 48 Hours, Saturday on CBS.